Hello, boxing fans around the world. Thank you once again for joining us on Talk and Fight, where we bring you all the news and headlines from around the world. And boy, do we have some doozies today. Let's begin with uh, a really big news item that we're all concerned about, quite frankly. 57-year-old Donovan Razor Ruddock is planning another comeback. Incredible. The latest senior fighter to be seemingly back and ready to fight his former top heavyweight from the 1980s and 90s, Donovan Razor Ruddock. Ruddock is now 57 years of age with a career record of 46 and 1 with 30 knockouts, who in the past has traded punches with the division's best, shared the ring twice with a still rampaging Mike Tyson, as we all recall, uh, those, those various fights, good ones indeed, but he lost both. His goal now is to become the oldest heavyweight champion in heavyweight history the current record held by George Foreman, who regained the title at the grand age of 46. Razor, Razor Ruddock retired in 2001, only to make a comeback in 2015. He was successful in two bouts against modest opposition before being knocked out by Dylan Carmen for the Canadian heavyweight title. All three of those bouts took place in 2015. Uh, Ruddock had blamed the loss to Carmen with rabbit punching during the bout, the reason. Setting his sights high, Ruddick is wanting a bout against 42-year-old current Cuban heavyweight contender Luis Ortiz, who's 32-2 and two with 27 knockouts. And he, claim, he claims to be in the best shape ever, even at his advanced age. Now based in the U.S., I'm sure there'll be a state that has to be a, have a sanction about involving Ruddick, having seen Ivan Holyfield recently approved for a professional bout, only for that decision to be reversed. There's now a worrying trend for aged fighters to come out of retirement for one last hurrah, but further nesting the retirement fund to some is too much temptation, whether it be an exhibition bout or, as is desired by Ruddock, a, a professional bout. It's just a matter of time before an accident happens and it's sad to see a former fighter of Ruddock's stature lured back by the dollar sign. Sadly, he won't be the only one though I'm sure many more senior boxers licking their lips at the thought of one more payday. Now, speaking of paydays, it's interesting to note also that uh, Erica Cruz has signed with Matchroom Boxing. The WBA World Featherweight Champion Erica Cruz has signed a promotional deal with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. Okay? Cruz is 13-1 13, 13 with three knockouts, and she tore, tore away the uh, WBA, WBA crown. Uh, from the long-reigning champion, Helena Merginovich, uh, with a technical decision at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point back in April. Uh, the Mexican ending the five-year rule of the champion on the cards after an accidental head clash halted the contest after seven rounds. But that's not the biggest signing news in terms of dollars as we move forward with our stories and news of the day. It turns out that... Uh, Amanda Serrano has now signed with Jake Paul's Most Valuable Promotions. Multiple world champion, a WBC featherweight champion, Puerto Rican, Amanda Serrano, has signed with the company Most Valuable Promotions, co-founded by YouTuber Jake Paul, who has recently ventured into the world of boxing, as we all know. Serrano is a seven-division boxing champion who has held nine titles from 115 pounds to 140 pounds, she holds the Guinness record for most boxing world championships in different divisions. The 24-year-old American YouTuber shared part of his training camp with Serrano for the card in which both achieved important victories. It is expected that a fight between Serrano and Irish Katie Taylor, also considered one of the best fighters today and signed to matchroom, by the way, can and will take place soon. In other news, we talk now about Josh Neal T.G. Castro, who's an undefeated junior middleweight prospect. He's out of Florida. Junior middleweight prospect Josh Neal T.J. Sorry, T.G. Castro, who's 5-0 with three knockouts, who has experienced a long, often difficult trip to get where he is today as he's preparing his, uh, his fight in the fourth time in 2021. The 24-year-old Castro faces a 
57 fight veteran Ryan L. Griffin out of Las Vegas in the co-featured event of the Fight Night in Framingham card presented by Sheridan's Boxing Promotions for the benefit of fighting life at the Sheraton Hotel in Framingham, Massachusetts. It will mark the first professional boxing show ever held in Framingham, a city incorporated in 1700, located in the Metro West subregion of Greater Boston, less than 40 miles from Boston, in fact. Fighting Life is actually an after-school youth boxing program and academic empowerment program, available 100% free of charge to students beginning in elementary school through high school education. High Octane Classics is the presenting sponsor. Other sponsors include Platts Landscaping and Shamrock Sports. Let's go back to the fighter. Born in Puerto Rico, Castro moved to moved as a baby to Lawrence, and years later he escaped the mean streets there by moving to Maine to focus on his boxing career. During most of his young life, he bounced from one foster family to another, almost other times, he eventually moved to Florida, where his life dramatically changed, where he entered DS Boxing and Boca Raton. Quote, I was getting into trouble in Lawrence and moved to Maine to get on the right path as an adult, Castro explained. I had a lot of personal issues. I then moved and trained for a while in Worcester, Massachusetts, where I met Chuck Shearns, who became my advisor and later my manager. I'm not worried about this fight because at the end of the day, I'll do what I do. I'm going to continue to work hard and figure things out. Castro, TG stands for the gorilla, by the way, understands how fortunate he is to have a strong team in his corner. In addition to Shearns, Team Castro includes head trainer Derek Santos, strength and conditioning coach Phil Daru, nutritionist Jose Rajos, and camp coordinator Maureen Shea. So there you go. A bit of uh, news for a young guy who kind of deserves a shot. Uh, and he'll get that shot in Framingham, Massachusetts very so soon. Talking about shots, Miguel Vasquez of the Flores headlines Mexican Fight Night this Saturday on October, 7, on October 2nd, when I think a few of us will be uh, watching another fight overseas. But anyway, former lightweight and world champion Miguel Vasquez continues his march back to contender status this Saturday, October 2nd, in a 10-round lightweight main event against former world title challenger Oliver Trombita Flores at the Verite social venue in Monterrey, Mexico. The Vasquez Flores and a full slate of undercard bouts will stream live and exclusively on ESPN Plus starting at 8 p.m. Uh, Vasquez, who's 43 and 10 with 17 knockouts, held the IBF lightweight world title for more than four years from August 2010 to September 2014 and made six su successful title defenses. He's nine and six in his last 15 bouts, a run of fighting top competition that's included nine run stoppage defeat to current undisputed junior welterweight world champion Josh Taylor and lost last October's highly controversial split decision loss to Lewis Ritson. He rebounded, however, from the Ritson disappointment with April's seventh round TKO over Isaiah Hernandez. Flores, who's 33 and two with 19 knockouts from Leon Nicaragua, challenged Takashi Uchiyama in 2015 for the WBA Super Flyweight World title, falling via third round TKO. He's 3-1 since that setback and has not fought since a second round TKO win over Rolando Giano in September 2019. You can check the Boxing247.com website for further details on that card coming up this Saturday night. Speaking of upcoming cards... On October uh, 23rd at the State Farm Arena, Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, we're seeing Xander Zayas, who's 10-0, undefeated, with seven knockouts. The 19-year-old Puerto, uh, Puerto Rican-born prodigy, who is a frontrunner for 2021 Prospect of the Year, will fight Dan Carpensi in a six-round junior middleweight bout Saturday, October 23rd, as I said, at the State Farm Arena. Zayas Carpensi will serve as the co-feature at the Throwdown in A-Town, main event between WBO junior lightweight world champion Jamel Herring and undefeated former featherweight world champion Shakur Stevenson. Nico Ali Walsh, who's 1-0 with one knockout, grandson of the greatest Muhammad Ali, has an opponent for his second pro bout, Ali Walsh. Wolf, Wolf, Nico Ali Walsh will face James Wesley who's also 1-0 from Toledo, Ohio, in a four-round middleweight tilt. 
So we've got Herring Stevenson, Zayas Carpensi, and Ali Walsh Wesley, uh, which will live air, which will air live on ESPN and ESPN Deportes in uh, in uh, South America. Zayas said, "I'm grateful to Top Rank and ESPN for the opportunity. Fighting underneath the main event like Herring Stevenson in front of a great Atlanta fan is an honor. Also, be my first time fighting on ESPN as a co-feature, and I will not disappoint." My goal is to win Prospect of the Year, and I'm coming to Atlanta to put on a spectacular show. Don't miss it. Fair enough. Speaking of upcoming fights, Archie Sharp headlines an MTK fight night at York Hall on October 29th. This is a massive MTK fight night event uh, at York Hall in London on October 29th, Friday night. Headlined by WBO Super featherweight title fight between unbeaten Archie Sharp and Alexis Cabor. The card next month will be broadcast live on ESPN Plus in association with Top Rank uh, worldwide on IFL TV. Sharp, who's 20 and 0 with nine knockouts, is back following his victory over Diego Chavez in July as WBO's number two ranked fighter looks to move one step closer to a world title shot. Standing in his way, however, is Kabora, who's 28 and 4 with seven knockouts, who has previously gone the distance with former world champion Ray Vargas and held the WBC International Super Bantamweight title. You can find additional information, as I said earlier, on the boxing247.com website. Upcoming fights also include uh, out of Anaheim's Honda Center in Anaheim, California, on the 13th of November. The Pride of Tijuana, Amy, probably Jaime, Jaime Mungia, 37 and 0 with 30 knockouts. And the People's Champion, King Gabriel Rosada, who's 26, 13 and 1 with 15 knockouts, are set for an all out middleweight battle at Anaheim's Honda Center on Saturday, November 13th. The highly anticipated event will feature two of the world's toughest fighters in a fierce clash, adding to the long standing boxing rivalry of Mexico versus Puerto Rico. The 12 rounder middleweight fight for the WBO, WBO Intercontinental Middleweight World Championship will be live exclusively on the zone worldwide. Quote We are excited to give fight fans a great show between two warriors of, of the sport at Anaheim's Honda Center, said Oscar De La Hoya, chairman and CEO of Golden Boy. The event is going to be full of non stop action between two fighters who are willing to leave everything in the ring. It's going to be a great night for the fight fans and another great showing for Golden Boy Boxing in Southern California. Good for them. And I look forward to that, by the way. It's going to be a good fight. Speaking of good fights, Shannon Courtney is going head-to-head against Jamie Mitchell. Jamie Mitchell has vowed to make her Saturday, October 9th, WBA Bantamweight World Title Showdown a dark and devastating experience for reigning champion Shannon Courtney at the m s Bank Arena in Liverpool. The pair were originally set to clash on the third and final installment of Matchroom Fight Camp on, a, on August 14th, before Watford's Courtney withdrew after sustaining an injury. But we'll now look to lock horns on the huge Liam Smith versus Anthony Fowler card next week, uh, which will be broadcast on the zone. Mitchell, who's 6-0-2 with four knockouts, is trained by former pro Dewey Cooper in Nevada and was ranked number one in the USA at Super Bantamweight in 2016 before turning professional a year later with a points win over another accomplished amateur, Dahlia Gomez, at the Alameda County Fairgrounds in Pleasanton. The Miracle has remained undefeated in her seven fights since picking up stoppage wins over Latrell Solomon, Claudia Vargas Ramirez, and Anna Karen Compion, and Naomi Bosquez, and the 36-year-old heads into the, her first title fight, brimming with confidence. I'm called the miracle because I have endured so much in my life that others never, would never survive, said Mitchell. On October 9th, there is nothing that Shannon Courtney can do to me that I haven't already experienced. I plan to take all of my anger, all of my frustration, and all of my ill will out on her body. Woo! Tough words. Ah, Richard McLaren, findings 
on Rio 2016 tournament integrity reforms is the headline. Following the publication of the report for the first phase of Professor Richard McLaren's independent investigation into boxing, AIBA noted the findings regarding the Rio 2016 boxing tournament with concern and confirmed that extensive reforms have been implemented to ensure sporting integrity at the current AIBA competitions. Professor McLaren was appointed by AIBA as part of the recognition by the current AIBA leadership that governance, sporting integrity, and financial integrity were not previously satisfactory and that there was a need for reform. Professor McLaren will investigate not only Rio 2016, but also all key events till now to reach full transparency. And I quote IABA President Umar Kremlov, Professor McLaren and his team have identified a system for manipulating the results of bouts at the Rio 2016 boxing tournament. I am determined to ensure that boxers receive a fair fight. This determination is demonstrated by AABA's clear commitment to uncovering the truth and acting on it. We must now carefully examine the report and see what steps are needed to ensure justice. What is important is that we make sure the me mechanisms are in place to show that results are above suspicion. Good words and more action to come on that front, I'm sure. Upcoming, as I stated earlier, uh, this Saturday night, we have uh, the Eubank versus Muratov boxer last press conference quotes and pictures go to boxing247.com for these pictures as these guys go face to face prior to their fight here we go a few quotes from uh, chris eubank uh, who's as i say up against anatoly muratov that will be uh, held at the ssc arena wembley in london england this saturday night a few days uh well i guess that'd be tomorrow a uh, british star chris eubank as you know he's 30 and 2 uh, with 22 knockouts and uh, he's up against the german puncher anatoly muratov who's 24 2 and 1 with 17 knockouts uh and they're 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 head uh, they're going head to head this saturday all right let's start off with just a quick little comment from ben shalom founder and ceo of boxer we're deli delighted to bring boxing to the biggest mainstream audiences on sky sports so to be here now on the brink of our first show the first of many one every two weeks until christmas is an amazing feeling said chris eubank jr activity that was the main goal for this year i wanted to fight at least three times a good performance on saturday and then right back in the ring in december on sky sports everything is going to plan i really believe so this is definitely the next chapter i've had many chapters in my career so far and this is potentially going to be the most exciting one we have the full backing of sky sports and there are many huge fans fights to be made sorry I'm in the prime of my career. I'm 32 years old. I've got two, three, four years of solid prime fighting in me, and we're going to be displaying it on Sky Sports. I've got a hell of a lot of good fights in me. Muratov has got 25 wins and two losses as a solid opponent. This is a perfect fight for me where I'm at right now. After I get through this man, we're on to other big names and a world title. I've probably seen about five minutes of this guy box. So I actually don't really even have a good game plan for this as of right now because of the late change. We'll match more of him as the days go by, and I'll deal with him on the night. That might be a mistake. But anyway, that's all the news that's fit to print today. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate all the likes and shares. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell to let yourself be aware of when I'm coming up next to see you with all the news and headlines of the day. Thanks for joining me. And we'll see you on Monday.